the Higgs and the LHC. So I is that it? Is that the big discovery? Are, are there more discoveries in the pipeline? Uh, you know, now we've completed the standard models, so that now we can go, uh, your latest book is on cosmology, and so you're going to become a cosmologist, and we'll issue you a card so you can start doing cosmology, or is there more that's going to come on the particle physics side? Uh, well, look, I mean, the reason, the main motivation for building the machine was to find the Higgs particle, uh, but there are many, many other things that this machine potentially can give insight into. I mean, I mean, first of all, I should say, even if the results on Wednesday are positive, that's not even the end of the Higgs story. That simply shows us that there is a particle that seems to have the characteristics of the one that we have proposed mathematically, but it will take a lot more detailed investigation to nail it, to really see if it is that particle. Maybe it's some other surprise particle that's masquerading as the one that we've been looking for. So that's the first order of business. But there are a vast number of other things that are on the table from the theoretical perspective. There are theories that go beyond the ones that you saw on the t-shirt yesterday. So you have the standard model of particle physics, but it leaves many questions unanswered, such as, why do we have the particular spectrum of particles that we know about? Why are there electrons and up quarks and down quarks and strange quarks and top quarks and bottom quarks, charm quarks? Why are there three non-gravitational forces, a strong and weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, and then gravity? Why do those forces have the particular strengths that they do? I mean, here's a big mystery. We have the gravitational force on the one hand is the most familiar force, right? It's the one that's anchoring us right now. It's what we feel. But you also have other forces like the electromagnetic force. When you compare the strengths of these two forces, the intrinsic strength, it's a huge difference. Gravity is some 10 to the minus 36 times weaker than the electromagnetic force. I mean, you know, it's an amazing thing that you've got the whole Earth underneath us right now, but my flimsy little arm, basically operating via the electromagnetic force, I just beat out the entire Earth. <laughs> amazing, right? And the big puzzle is, why is it that the gravitational force is so weak compared to the other forces? Why do the particles have the particular numerical masses that they have? Why is the electron so fantastically low mass compared to, say, the top quark mass? So there are all these puzzles that are even embedded in the standard model of particle physics that we theorists have tried to put forward solutions to, with names like the supersymmetric version of the standard model, with names like supergravity, with